brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. Francis has a Protestant understanding of the Mass. His own words prove it. His own words in his most recent document against the Latin Mass prove it unequivocally. And a series on a Catholic thought leader website that hasn't gotten much attention makes the case very well that what he believes is Protestant, not Catholic that the Mass is a symbolic community meal and memorial far before it is a representation of the sacrifice of Calvary, which is the Catholic teaching. Today, we're going to go into that article and demonstrate how that connects to Francis's great fear of the resurgence of the preconciliar faith. A faith which it looks like he doesn't even have anyway. His fear is that more and more young people will be drawn to the faith that the old Mass represents. And he just can't have that at any costs. 1 Peter 5 has been running a multi-part series examining Francis's latest attack on the traditional liturgy. His document, Desiderio Desideravi, which many Catholics weirdly praised for having Catholic-sounding things to say about the Mass, while also l- l- lamenting its attacks on the traditional Catholic movement and the Mass. The author of that series, Jose Antonio Lloreta, has been examining the document and finding serious theological errors that point to Francis's understanding of the Mass, which is Protestant in nature. From 1 Peter 5, headline, From Sacrifice of Calvary to Memorial of Presence. The author's assertion in this piece is that Francis has a Protestant understanding of the Mass, that it is a memorial of the presence of Christ, and not a propitiatory sacrifice. If true, then that's heresy, and his heresy would be laid out in writing for the world to see. Tension bishops who are, we think, are better then most of the rest of them, this is all you need should be right here to make your case against him. But anyway, let's examine the case Mr. Yoretta makes. And to be clear, I am the one using the heresy word, not the author of the piece. Mr. Yoretta begins with the infallible definition of the Mass from the Council of Trent. To be clear, if you deny this definition, then you're not a Catholic, plain and simple. From his article, quote, Christ the Lord, eternal priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, loving his own who were of the world, at the Last Supper, on the night he was betrayed, wishing to leave his beloved spouse, the church, a visible sacrifice such as the nature of men requires, that would represent the bloody sacrifice offered once on the cross, and perpetuate its memory to the end of time, and whose salutary virtue might be applied in remitting those sins which we daily commit, offered his body and blood under the species of bread and wine to God the Father, and under the same species allowed the apostles, whom he at that time constituted the priests of the New Testament, to partake thereof, commanding them and their successors in the priesthood to make the same offering. The August sacrifice of the altar, then, is no mere empty commemoration of the passion and death of Jesus Christ, but a true and proper act of sacrifice, whereby the high priest, by an unbloody immolation, offers himself a most acceptable victim to the Eternal Father, as he did upon the cross. It is one and the same victim. The same person now offers it by the ministry of his priests, who then offered himself on the cross, the, man- the manner of offering alone being different. End quote. See the chapter 22 of the Council of Trent for that. That definition is de fide, meaning it's a matter of faith to be believed by all who claim to hold the faith. What does Mr. Yoretta say Francis believes the Mass to be? He begins the, to make the case by giving a very brief overview of what the so-called Reformers believed during and after the Reformation about the Mass being a symbolic act and not a real and true sacrifice. Then we get to Francis's rather big error. Quote, Desiderio Desideravi clearly and insistently adopts this theological option of the Mass as a memorial that has the sacrificial aspect only secondarily to the extent that it is a commemoration. Already at the beginning, describing the Last Supper the Lord wanted to eat with the Apostles, Francis says, this is a quote from the document, He knows that he is the lamb of the Passover meal. He knows that he is the Passover. This is the absolute newness, the absolute originality of that supper, the only truly new thing in history, which renders that supper unique, and for this reason, the Last Supper, unrepeatable. Nevertheless, his infinite desire to reestablish that communion with us 
that was and remains his original design will not be satisfied until every man and woman from every tribe, tongue, people, and nation shall have eaten his body and drunk his blood. And for this reason, that same supper will be made present in the celebration of the Eucharist until he returns again. Incidentally, the author continues, note that in the document's first paragraph describing the Mass, in addition to the theory of the one unrepeatable action, which is a Protestant claim, the Pope affirms that the Mass is a representation of the Supper, not of the sacrifice on Calvary per se. This is reminiscent of the original, defective, and subsequently changed Protestant-leaning definition of the Mass given in the general instruction on the Roman Missal, to which Ottaviani and Bacci, two of the Orthodox fathers of who worked in the Roman Curia and who nearly had Paul VI dubbed a heretic for this error, continuing, to which Ottaviani and Bacci objected so forcefully in their short critical study. It is also worthy of note that this paragraph suggests that every man and woman should or shall eat of the Eucharist, which suggests a soteriological universalism and fits in with Pope Francis's pragmatic support of any and all Christians, Catholic or not, in a state of grace or not, living by the Decalogue or not, receiving the Eucharist. End lengthy quote. In other words, Francis has at best a hybrid understanding of the Mass, a hybrid between Protestantism and Catholicism, a hybrid that leans heavily towards the Protestant understanding, and that's heresy. I can't really make the case in good conscience for Francis, not knowing what the Catholic Church actually teaches about the nature of the Mass, given the years he spent in the priesthood and in the episcopate, and before all that, in Jesuit formation, because the Jesuits have a very long formation process, all of that, before finding his way into the position to run the church into the ground. But his position definitely explains a lot, including why he says he has never denied any one Holy Communion, and that denying the Eucharist to Catholic public, public figures who affirm the Moloch ritual and work to support it is the wrong thing to do. It's because Francis has a different faith than the Catholic faith. Whatever it is, I couldn't really tell you, but it is different. His understanding of the Eucharist is the giveaway. And this is why any and all signs of traditional Catholic faith, the preconciliar faith, making a resurgence is a non-starter for Francis. Once the demand for the pre-1955 Holy Week liturgy became obvious and was growing across the church, reportedly Francis at that time, we're talking 2015, 2016, at that time Francis began to act against the traditional movement. Why? Because at that time, it was obvious that the traditionalists were making inroads against modernism, not just in growth in numbers, but in substance in rejecting the so-called reforms of the council and of the reforms that made the new mass possible, like the 1955 Holy Week reforms under Pope Pius XII. The signs for this resurgence are everywhere, and the least likely news publication in the U.S. recently shared a story about it, much to the chagrin of one of the highest profile priests in the United States. That priest is Father Edward Beck, who I don't think I've really covered on this channel before, but he's most well known as a CNN contributor, and he's appalled at the story I'm about to share with you. From Father Edward Beck's Twitter account, quote, she, the author of the piece I'm about to quote to you from the New York Times, describes a church I don't even recognize, and quite honestly, have no desire to encourage. It's as if Vatican II never happened, end quote. Ah, uh, yes, that sounds like quite a nice place to me, to be honest with you. Headline from the New York Times. New York's hottest club is the Catholic Church. Yeah, it's kind of appalling to refer even in jest to the church as a nightclub, but this piece does a decent job of describing the thriving traditional scene in New York City. This is what the modernists fear. And this is what Francis categorically rejects in his statement about the Eucharist. Quote, As senior churchmen seek to make Catholicism palatable to modernity, Members of a small but significant scene are turning to the ancient faith in defiance of liberal pieties. The scene is often associated with Dimes Square, a downtown Manhattan neighborhood popular with 2020 affliction, weary Generation Z or Zoomer crowd, but it has spread across a network of podcasts and upstart publications. Its sensibility is more transgressive than progressive. Many of its denizens profess to be apolitical. Others hold ultra opinions where sincerely or as fashion statements. Urban trends can shape a culture as millennial Brooklyn did in its heyday. The dime square scene is small, but its ascent highlights a culture-wide shift. 
progressive morality, formulated in response to the remnants of America's Christian culture, was once a vanguard. By 2020, progressivism had come to feel hegemonic in the social spaces, occupied by young urban intellectuals. Traditional morality acquired a transgressive glamour. Disaffection with the progressive moral majority, combined with Catholicism's historic ability to accommodate cultural subversion, has produced an in-your-face style of traditionalism. This is not your grandmother's church, and whether the new faithful are performing an act of theater or not, they have the chance to revitalize the church for young, educated Americans. The confluence of New York's young, right-leaning intellectuals and thinkers like Miss Nekrasova, the author interviewed her briefly in a part that I skipped over, who was once better known for her irreverent socialist critiques, might suggest that the rising interest in Catholicism in certain social circles is just another way of being ironic or chasing a trend. Nekrasova calls herself Catholic like Andy Warhol. In a scene indebted to Warhol, the self-proclaimed deeply superficial pop artist, is Catholicism just another provocation? End quote. There's, I'm going to tell you something that I learned years ago when I was working in an RCIA programs. And that is this. There's a phrase called, fake it till you make it. It's an approach that some good spiritual advisors tell young would-be converts to adopt. And I heard it from the lips of one of the most pious deacons I have ever met in the church. Those who hunger for the faith but have hang-ups about this or that teaching of the church or about the existence of God himself are often told to come to Mass, pray for the gift of faith, and act as if you have it already. Live the faith long enough and you'll find yourself believing it. But this notion of it being something quasi-fake is what Francis often talks about when he's talking about the traditional movement being merely an ideology. This is exactly what he's talking about. And because of that, it's something to be wary of also because this sort of thing feeds into his rants and works against the faith. It's a double-edged sword. But make no mistake about this. This is also exactly what Rome is afraid of, a resurgent traditional movement. Even if for some participants it starts out as merely something to go against the grain of the culture with. For many, if they fake it, they'll eventually make it, whether they often intend to or not. They will actually have a real interior conversion. So pray for all the people featured in that article that, they, that their conversion be authentic. And if they haven't had a conversion yet, that they have a real interior conversion. They come to know our Lord and his church. There are many such cases of that happening. And Rome knows that when traditional Catholicism is being seen by young Catholics and by young people outside the church as the way to stick your thumb in the eye of secular authorities, that by itself will draw people to it. That is a threat not only to the revolution in the church, but also to Francis's desire to further secularize the Catholic faith. And I'm curious what you think of all this. Do you see the connection between Francis's understanding of the Eucharist and of the Mass in a weird hybrid but mostly Protestant understanding of the Mass and of the Eucharist? Do you see the connection to that and to this outgrowth around the world of younger Catholics embracing traditional Catholicism? Do you see the two linkages there? Do you see how his understanding and his work with secular forces that, that are at odds with the Catholic faith, how that feeds into people who are on the outside seeing the state of the world, why they're drawn to traditional Catholicism? Do you understand now why he is so opposed to that? And do you see the dangers in the traditional movement, at least in some places, being merely a scene? Well, let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Share this on social media if you can. That really does help as well. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.